Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm here with Steven, and he's going to give us a tour of his super sick Honda Element. The original design plan for this was to have a, a camper build that we could sleep in that you can collapse fully behind the rear seats. It kind of consists mainly of this, of this wood box here. Um, so it's, it's 25 inches deep, so it goes right up to the back seats where the back seats would normally be. Right now the back seats aren't in, but they, you can still put them in there if you want to. And then there's three main compartments. So the first one, uh, we have a propane tank, a one gallon propane tank that fits perfectly in here. Uh, so there's 12 inches of clearance here. Uh, and then in the center, we have a 12 volt fridge that holds probably uh, four or five days worth of food uh, for two people. And uh, that runs to the 12 volt outlet in the back here. And then in the third compartment, we have our drawer compartment. Um, it's not completely full right now, but uh, this allows us to cook off of the tailgate. And then you have uh, just extra storage space for spices or utensils. Uh, and then this little Stanley kit is a really nice addition. It's a, it's a little kit that, that has a pot, a pot, a frying pan, four bowls, four plates, uh, and four utensils in there, and a spatula. And it's all nice and self-contained. Um, I saw that and I was like, I gotta get that. It looks really sick. It, it works, it works perfectly. <laughs> it, it really covers everything. Um, so you really only need to grab that if you want to. Um, and then uh, this is a four inch mattress on top. Uh, it's cut down from an Ikea mattress uh, and then I, I sewed custom covers for them and it splits uh, in a pretty specific way uh, once you push the front seats up and get an extra six inches of space so that gives us the extra space that we need to sleep comfortably in here and uh, you do a little bit of reorganizing of the of the cushions and you get that extra space added in if you want to come around to the side uh, I can show you the inside are those automatic locks dude they are. Oh my God. <laughs> so this is the, the front side of the platform. Um, so these, these cushions are hinged so, that, so for easy access to underneath. Um, and then the front is essentially consists of two additional panels. So these are not fixed down. Uh, they rest on these metal legs uh, that I fabricated that fold into the back of the box. So they're hinged at the back and they both fold away. Then this allows access underneath for whatever other gear you're carrying. Uh, right now we're pretty empty, but uh, you know we can, we can fit everything that we need under here, whether it's clothes or tools or recovery gear, um, we can access everything under here. Then these two panels will just stack on top of the box and all of the cushions will be able to stack on top of the box as well when it's collapsed and everything fits behind the rear seats. So the other thing about these panels is that uh, there's a little registration channel. So there's, there's a little raised edge on this leg um, right here and there's a, a matching channel in the panel right here and so the panel actually registers on that channel and what that does is it allows it to lock in and it doesn't it keeps them from sliding around um, the other thing that those rails allow and that channel allows is that they actually it actually allows the panels to slide apart and extend so that's how we get the extra space so if you move the seats all the way forwards. This is not quite all the way forwards, but it'll illustrate the idea. You can actually slide these panels forward and that gives you the extra space and you can just space them out and you'll get a little bit of space in between the panels. But when the mattress is on, you don't really feel that. A lot of slat beds work that way. So I figured that two inch gap was pretty acceptable. Um, there's no center support, but with this being three quarter inch plywood and the fact that you know it's only two of us and we're we're not too heavy. We haven't had any issues with any panel breakage or anything like that. Um, it's a little flexible, but it's, it kind of lends to the comfort a little bit. But overall, it's been working really well. Can we uh, check out your custom rack? I, I know you get that a lot, but sure. it's like the sickest part of this build. I mean, it's all good, but this is extra sick. So this is the roof rack up here. Um, this is all custom fabricated. Um, it was, well, the design was, was based heavily off of Gobi's stealth rack, uh, but I made some, some modifications that I wanted. 
uh, on my end. Um, the main thing is uh, I wanted to be able to walk up here and store things. We carry our full-size spare up here, uh, extra fuel. Sometimes we carry the tire chains up here, uh, firewood, etc. cetera. Uh, but you can get up here and walk around all you want. That's about it. There's a removable panel in the back uh, over the sunroof. And uh, I modified Gobi's design so I could have a totally flat loading area. I didn't want to have anything sticking up to make sure that we could use, utilize the space as much as possible. And that's about it. What are you most proud of of your build? Oh man, uh, this roof rack is probably the thing that took me the longest. Uh, it took a, a, a lot of time and effort to, to really get it to look the way that I wanted it to and follow the roof line the way that I wanted it to. Um, that, that, that took a significant amount of time. So I understand why Gobi charges the amount of money that they do for their racks because it does take a lot of design time to figure out how to make things look correct. So that's, that's probably what, what I'm most proud of. And do you have any like uh, future plans for the build? Um, yeah, so the camper system overall is pretty solid. There's some modifications that I would like to do on a, a future iteration. So I'll probably be building it from scratch again. Um, it doesn't really make sense to, to build off of this one based on the stuff that I want to do to it. Uh, the next major thing is uh, the head unit. Uh, I've been having some problems with the knobs now. So uh, this is the original uh, head unit. Uh, but I'm going to put in something that will be a little bit more accessible. Uh, so I'm going to put an Android head unit so I'll be able to run GPS off of it and have maps and charge the phone off of it. Uh, uh, it'll have Bluetooth as well. I'll be able to do calling, etc. because right now, um, because I don't have an auxiliary jack in my phone anymore, I have to make the choice of charging or using an auxiliary jack. But uh, I'm also going to probably do a wireless charging integration in the center cubby eventually. I know some other element people have done it, so I'll probably do the same thing so I can be as wireless as possible in the, in the cockpit. Uh, how, how can we find you? Uh, an Instagram account. Uh, it's called SilverLineE. Uh, so silver.line.e. Uh, and that's where you can find us. And we post pictures of our travels and places that we go. So if you want to follow, that'd be great. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel under the same name, or Silverline Element. Uh, and if you want to follow there as well, I'll be posting videos in the future. You definitely subscribe to that channel. I'll leave the link down below in the description, guys.